Today in our 2011 Chevrolet HHR, we're going to take a look at and also show you how to install the Blue Ox 4 Diode Tow Bar Wiring Kit. Part number is BX8848. All right, here's what the diode kit's going to look like minus that 26 foot length of wire that we've already ran. Now the diodes are going to take two inputs. So we can have our towed vehicles input and our towing vehicles input, whether it's for our running lights or whether it's for our our turn signals, our brakes, and we have a single output coming to our factory bowl. We're going to have four of these. These are going to help to prevent back feed from the motorhome to the car, or for the, from the car to the motorhome. Just make sure that the, if it's going in here, it's only coming out here, and if it's going in here, it's only coming out here, not out of one of the other ones here. So it's going to re do a really good job about protecting both the vehicle and the towed vehicle's wiring got a few extra lengths of wire. This is good because we do need to make a jumper from one side over to the other. Real easy process. We'll show you how to take care of that. And then we've got all of our spade connectors here. Once we have those attached to our wire, we just slide those on all the way down till they make contact. It's going to give us a real, real secure connection. Got a small ring terminal here. We're going to use this to ground out the system, which will show you a nice convenient spot located here at the rear. Now the bulb and socket kit is going to require us to run a four pole wire from the front side of our vehicle here at our wiring connector all the way back to our tail lights. Now once the fascia is back in place that gets a little bit more difficult. So what we like to do is just take plenty that we know we're going to need here, run that out, and then we're going to use zip ties to secure this and any other accessories that we might need for our braking system before we get this all put back together. Now as we route our wire, we just want to ensure that we stay away from any sharp edges or any significant sources of heat. It also anywhere that might pinch our wire, the way we can avoid any damage to it. All right, that should do us for our wiring. That's going to get it back here to a safe area. We'll take care of running it to the back of the vehicle once we get our fascia back on. All right, now we previously ran our wire back this way. Now if I weren't doing a braking system that required the use of these lines. I would simply run it right over top of this cross rail, being sure to stay under the rack and pinion here, and then I'd tie in with my brake and my fuel lines. Since my system does require that we tie into these, I'm going to make a loop kind of up over the engine compartment. So just depending on your system, that's the way you'll want to do it. So right now I'm just going to poke as much of this wire up in here as I can get. Then we'll go up top there, see if we can find it and pull it on through. Now once I get it up here in the engine compartment, I want to get an anchor point established. So we want to use something heavy, something fixed. In our case here, we're fouling up that radiator hose. So be able to use that. wiring from my braking system that's going to go in a little bit later. I'm just going to move this kind of out of the way. I'm just going to follow right along inside of our fender well here and then once we get to the back side we'll drop right down back underneath the car. Now once we have that ran up here, join it in with any other wiring that we might have and we're going to secure it off right here to this line. That'll provide us with a really nice anchor point so we won't have to worry about it ever kind of sagging down below the vehicle. Continue running it back around here where we want it. It's a little bit of a loop up here. Now we're gonna head right down that direction back under the vehicle. We're just going to feed some down there that way we'll be able to go underneath the vehicle there and find it. Now we can pull our wire down here from underneath. 
just going to be important to check and we really want to make sure that we don't make any contact with the steering shaft which is right above this little circle here that runs up there towards the steering wheel or anything else that might damage the wire. Looks like we got a nice straight shot there so tuck it in right above our brake lines that's going to be a safe area. We'll just follow right along with those till we get to the rear of the vehicle there. Now you'll notice as we get right in this area, kind of just in front of that driver's side rear wheel, our exhaust comes in here. What we want to do is use that heat shield that they've got around the brake lines and the fuel lines here. We're going to use that as protection for our wires as well. So I'm going to run my wire right in behind it and then zip tie it to that back side. Now you can see here I've separated my green wire from the yellow, brown, and white wire. The green wire, it needs to go over to our passenger side. Now we can just continue to head on across with the brake lines or the brake line, rather, and the fuel lines. Now we'll tie into that fuel filler neck. And that's going to get us pretty close to where we want to go. All right, and that should give us the length we need here to run up behind the bumper to the back side of our tail lights. Now our other three wires here, I'm going to tuck right through this little slot. That's going to help keep them up and over our spring here, so we don't have to worry about them getting pinched up in there. And then if we'll stay well above the exhaust here, we'll be able to mount to that upper hanger location. Now we've got our wires back here. Get them ran up behind our tail lights, which is just going to be right up behind this pocket here. Now we're going to come right up here on the underside of our body. We want to make a small hole that will allow us to pass our wire through. Now, of course, you want to check in behind there and make sure there's nothing in the way or anything that you might drill into, and then just make a small hole. Now we'll go over to the other side do the same thing there. Now we'll just pass our wire up in the hole we've created here. And we're going to go up top, we'll pull it up, make our connections. And then we're going to use some silicone sealant where we can get that sealed up really nicely. We don't want it to be loose to where it can kind of move around. That might cause us issues down the road. So once we've got that set in there, just let that sit and harden and that should give us great protection. Do the same thing on the other side as well. Now to access that area, we're just gonna remove our covers here on each side. Pop them out with a screwdriver there. Reach down in. And there we have our wire. Now we're gonna test and figure out which wires that we're gonna be using on this top plug, there's two lights here in the back. We want to focus on the one on the top. So we've got a black wire, a brown wire, and a yellow wire. We'll start by having the running lights in the vehicle on. Let's test them I'm using just a little test probe here. All right, headlights off and back on. All right, so the brown wire is going to be for our taillights. That's going to match the wiring that came from the front. That should make the yellow wire our blinker and brake. So we'll probe that and have them turn on our left blinker. All right, and turn that off, hit the brakes. Perfect, we're getting the signals we want, and they match our wire color there. Now we'll go check the other side. Now on this side, we're going to be kind of in the same plug location. It's going to be the top plug. And we only need to find our blinker and our brake signal here. So we're going to ground out our clamp. And we'll check that green wire first. All right, 
and brakes. All right, that's what we're looking for. All right, now we're ready to split our wires off here. We also want to pull that plug out of the back of the light. There's just a little tab that you lift up on and then kind of wiggle it. And now we'll get inside of here, get our wires exposed, and start making our connections. All right, let's start with our turn signal and brake wire here. What we're gonna do is just snip that. We're gonna strip back both ends. We'll take one of the female spade connectors out of the kit, and we want to crimp that on each side. We can bring in our yellow wire here. It's okay to leave plenty of slack. We're gonna get this one stripped back and we'll add a spade connector to it. Now we'll grab one of our diodes. So we've got the input from our motor home. It's gonna go in one side. The input from our vehicle will go here. And then we've got an, our output to the bulb itself. That's all there is to it. And then we'll do the same thing on our brown wire, but remember we have to create a jumper. Now we'll use the provided length of extra wire to cross from our driver's side over to our passenger side. We'll strip back the end of our brown wire from our RV wiring there. And then I'm gonna twist these two together to create a splice. We'll take that black wire over and it's gonna be our running light on our passenger side. Then we'll take that little piece of brown wire that we just cut off and strip back and one of our spade connectors on there. Get just a little length there. We won't need much. We'll strip it back and get it in the other side of the butt connector. And we'll take our input from our motor home and just going to set it up the same way we did with the uh, yellow one here. Splice it right in line. Right now, if we look right down here, there's going to be a little stud that sticks out. It's got a 10 millimeter nut on it, or a nut that requires a 10 millimeter socket anyway. Let's take that nut off. This is where our white wire comes in. Slide that on there, and then we'll get it crimped. Now we'll place that on our stud. And we can use that nut to resecure it. All right, and that's ready to be plugged right back into the back side of our tail light. And now my jumper wire, you reach right down here and pull it right out through that gap. And we can tuck it right in this weather stripping all the way over to the other side of the vehicle. And then we'll send it right back through that same location there. Now they'll give us our right side turn and brake and then our running light circuit. Now over here it's just going to be a matter of making those same connections we did before. This time green to green and black to brown. The wires cut, get them stripped. Start adding our spade connectors. Okay, now it's time to take care of the wiring here on the front end. What we're going to be using is a six pole round connector. This is part number PK11609. This gives us a full function plug here and we can do a couple neat things with it. Our braking system has a monitor light wire. 
Typically, it'd just be another wire like this that was a jumper. We're going to be able to put that right in the back here and actually use the flexo coil wiring to transfer that signal. We've also got a 12 volt power wire here that we're going to run from our center stud. This is going to charge our battery while we're heading down the road. We'll put a breaker in line, keep everything nice and safe, but it's really a nice option being able to add this to the front and get so many different functions through one plug. What we're going to do is just kind of trim our wires down to the appropriate size. We'll leave a little bit of slack there so it'll have some room. Then we'll slide that boot right up and over our wires there. Let's get this separated. And we'll start stripping them back. I just want to unthread the small set screws and start making our connections. Now, for our 12 volt wire, we're going to use the center stud. From there, directly above it, it's going to be labeled TM. That's going to be for our running lights or our trailer marker lights. Now, if we look at it directly from the rear, with the top of our plug up, the next slot over, counterclockwise, is going to be our ground. Continuing on counterclockwise from there, we're going to come to our yellow wire for our left turn signal. Next stop, right turn signal. And lastly, I'm going to hook up my monitor wire. The reason I didn't strip it before is just because it's very similar to this one and I didn't want to get them mixed up. Right, we'll just slide our boot right down over the top and get it mounted right up in location. You can see you just take the provided self-tapping screws get it secured there, we're going to be in great shape. Now to test out the system, we're going to hook up to either our RV we plan on towing with or another vehicle that has a good working seven pole. What we'll do is turn on our left blinker first, check the right blinker, turn on our running lights, and then also check out those brakes. Now that tests out the towing capabilities, we still want to make sure that our factory controls all work as they did before we did our install. Now with our vehicle disconnected from our towing vehicle, we'll go through all of its signals here, make sure they're still working as they should. All right, everything's doing what we need it to do. Now we're ready to pop our panels back in both sides. You can tidy up your wires in there if you want with a couple zip ties. All right, and we're ready to go, be able to tow our vehicle and safely signal anyone behind us. Now with everything working as it should, that's gonna complete our installation of the Blue Ox Tow Bar Wiring Kit, part number BX8848 on our 2011 Chevrolet H. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.